Today I'm gonna show you guys how to dodge and burn like a boss. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. Find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today is Monday, it's contest day. I'm so excited. I have five winners to announce from last week's contest. We did a self-portrait contest and I couldn't pick one winner because there were just so many of you guys who were awesome. Um, so the contest winners are, I'm gonna give more details below. We got Ursta, Myra, Kate, Anthony, and David. All of you guys won a Flurn Pro. So congratulations to all of you guys. Images are totally awesome. I'm gonna put them down below because I'm so proud of you. I got my start doing self-portraits and uh, I know how important it is. And uh, for me, it really got my base like from knowing absolutely nothing to knowing what I do now. And uh, which is still, you know, in the big, <laughs> the big scheme of things, still absolutely nothing. But um, self-portraits are really important. They're great because it helps you get that practice. And uh, I loved all these portraits. I loved all the entries and uh, self-portraits are near and dear to my heart. So today we're editing Kate's image because there's a really cool thing I'm gonna show you guys with dodging and burning that's just gonna mystify your mind and spectacularize your brain. And uh, we're gonna get into it because I'm just saying stupid stuff right now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, this is our image of Kate and it's awesome. And I really like self-portraits on Florin because I get to see what our what our family looks like. So I know that this is, uh, this is Kate. Now, what I wanna show you guys is just a couple things. When I was looking at this image, um, I really liked it, but I was like, man, I, I think we can do a little bit more, um, you know, when it comes to like dodging and burning and things like that. Like um, maybe we can just take care of some of the areas. So here is some of the areas um, that I wanna take care of as far as like, um, Maybe, I, I guess, kind of like problem areas. Um, so one of those areas I wanna take care of is here in the highlights. Our highlights are just a little bit bright, um, you know, in, in the skin. And then some of our shadow areas are just a little bit dark. So, you know, nothing crazy, but um, it's a good opportunity to take care of those things. Let's just go ahead and zoom out and uh, delete those layers. So what I'm gonna show you guys is this really cool tool. Um, it's just using curves. So I'm gonna grab a curves adjustment layer. Anyone can do this. And what I wanna do is I wanna click right here in the middle and just drag this kind of like way up. Now we're gonna do this four different times and I'm gonna explain all the way through. Okay, so we're dragging our curves all the way up. What it's gonna do is it's gonna make the darks quite a bit brighter and you can see the highlights are totally blown out. So we have a really quick way of uh, solving this and you're gonna click on your layer mask here and go to image and down here to apply image. Now, what I wanna choose right here on my apply image is I wanna choose my background layer, okay? We don't wanna choose uh, merged because that is what visually looks like curves plus background layer. So let's go ahead and choose our background layer. And now, let's just move that, there we go. You always want this guy to be on multiply and we have the choice to invert it or not invert it. And in this case, since we made it so much brighter, I wanna invert it. And you can see what it does on our layer mask. I'll show you in a second. Um, it just makes your lights dark and your darks light. And in this case, what it's really doing is it's making our uh, curves adjustment layer, which is making everything brighter, now it's not visible on the bright spots. So it's only making the dark spots brighter, which is very cool. Let's hit okay. And you guys can see the before and after on that. I know it's way too much. I know it looks horrible right now. We're just setting the groundwork, okay? Now I'm gonna hold alter option uh, so you can look at our layer mask and see that's what the layer mask actually looks like, which is really cool. Now I'll show you guys again, we're gonna do this a couple more times. So this is kind of our groundwork. We're gonna do another curves adjustment layer. And this time I wanna click here in the middle and drag it on down. There we go. And we're gonna go to our layers again. We'll go to image, apply image on this one as well. And we're gonna choose our background layer and now we're not gonna hit invert. There we go. And let's hit okay. Now you can see what this does is it takes your brighter areas and it makes them a little bit darker. So this is the start of our dodging and burning. First, we wanna get everything uh, relatively equalized. So let's go ahead and just double click here and I can say, you know, my lights, now this is only targeting my lights, right? So I can bring my lights a little bit darker and that should help our exposure kind of equalize a little bit. So it doesn't look like we have any areas that are blown out. It's a little bit more, you know, back to, back centralized towards the middle, which is what we want. Now here with our darks, we're gonna do the same thing. The reason I dragged it way up there is just to, to kind of show you guys what we're doing. Um, now we take the same curve and we kind of just drag it down and this is going to kind of bring up a little bit of that brightness there in the darks. Okay, so this is getting our baseline good to go. 
And what we've got now, let me just show you, there's the before, the contrast is a little bit high, the face looks like it's a little overexposed and the grass underneath looks like it's underexposed. So now what we've done is kind of like brought that tonal range back together and we have something that looks a lot more refined now. And basically we just took those brights, high, uh, we, we made sure that they were selected using the apply image and we brought those down a little bit using curves and we took those darks, selected them using apply image and we brought those up. Great, now we're gonna do the opposite. So let's go ahead and group those together. I'm gonna grab another curves adjustment layer and this time we're gonna take those brights and make them brighter. So we're gonna grab our curves adjustment layer here again. Let's just click and make that a little bit brighter. There we go, let's go to our layers. Again, I'm gonna to go to image down here to apply image and we're gonna choose the background layer again and you can choose whether or not you want to invert. This time I'm not gonna invert it. Okay, so we have our brights and this is making our brights even brighter. Now we're gonna go and modify these curves again, just like we did with the first one. Let's make that invisible and I'm gonna click on my curves adjustment now and I'm gonna make the darks even darker. There we go, looking good. Now by using the supply image, what you get is a very nice um, gradation between your highlights and shallows. It doesn't look fake. It, it looks like it actually should look like that um, because you still have highlight detail. Let me just show you guys before. So if I shift click on this uh, layer mask and I turn the layer mask off, you can see it just makes everything darker, but it, it blanket darks everything. It's like it puts a big black bank blanket over top of everything. Now shift clicking this back again, you can see you can make out detail even in my shadows here. Let me just click in because it's not making this visible where the underlying layers are lighter. It's using that apply image to make sure it does not become visible. And what you get is you get a much more natural fall off between dark and light and uh, that's our goal. Now you can always adjust this. You don't have to make it that dark. If, if you'd rather go a little bit less dark, which I think that I kind of do, um, you can adjust it to your preferences. So again, you can make this visible or invisible. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna make this guy and I'm gonna make it just a little bit brighter even. Now, I know it seems like really counterintuitive. Um, we started off by an image with a decent bit of contrast and then we reduced that contrast and now we're like adding it back. And you're like, what are you doing here? And that's just, you just did the exact opposite of what we're doing. But here's the point. Now, with, with these two layers, you can put layer masks on them and decide where you want to be lighter and darker. So you're actively choosing your role to dodge and burn. So before it was your highlights or layers, highlight areas were overblown, blown out. I'm really good at talking today. Your shadow layers were a little too dark. And so we brought those back and now we can let you guys decide where you want to be lighter and where you want to be darker. So notice our layer masks. This is what the layer mask looks like for the lighter area, sorry, for the darker. And this is what it looks for the lighter. Now, I don't wanna go painting on this layer mask because if I do, um, well, I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, if I do go start painting on the layer mask and let's just say I paint away this area there, um, this is what my layer mask looks like now. I've ruined all that nice detail. So what we do instead is we group this layer with itself, okay? Grouped with itself and then we just put a layer mask on the group. Now, it doesn't matter what I do to this layer mask, it's never going to apply or affect the other layer mask. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this group as well. Okay, so here we have our highlights. Now, let's just go ahead and make this invisible and then I'm gonna hit Command I on this layer mask. So this highlights, this is my um, dodging. The highlights are going to be, you know, not visible right now. And basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and kind of paint these in. And this is that selective dodging and burning that I was just talking about. And um, what's really gonna give you guys the power to kind of like go in and do a lot of fine editing on your images. And really allow, you know, some areas to be brought into the highlights and then some areas to be pushed down into the shadows. So I'm choosing like the moss that's going on top of the face to kind of come into the brightness a little bit more. There we go. It's kind of like bringing this a little bit brighter. And then I'll show you guys, you know, we'll zoom out and kind of show you guys the before and after in just a minute here. Make a brush a little bit lighter. And then you can choose, you know, your little, these little guys and things like that. If you want to make them brighter, you can do that as well. But the point here is that everything you do is going to be restricted. It's not going to allow you to really mess anything up. 
because it's only going to be visible where your highlight should be light anyway. All right, so there we have a little bit of highlights in the image. Now we're going to do the same thing with the shadows. So let's make this black layer mask. And now I'm going to paint this in where my shadow areas are. And I have total control over what these shadow areas look like, how dark or how light I want them to be based on how much I paint this in. And I also know that everything that I paint in here is going to look completely natural because the layer mask that it's using to affect this curves adjustment layer is in fact defined by the lights and darks of my image. I know that's a lot to, it's a lot to say. <laughs> I hope it's more clear than it is to say, because I'm like, I don't even know how to explain this. Um, but you can see as I painted in, this is what my layer mask looks like where I'm just painting right now, nothing special. But because the layer mask here, and I'm holding option uh, and clicking on this, the layer mask here defines where it is and is not visible. I don't have to be particularly neat on this layer mask because the layer mask underneath it is already very well defining where this layer should and should not be visible. There we go. Let's go ahead and brighten up the hair a little bit as well, maybe right up here. That's very nice. So not a whole long time do we need to spend on this, but let's just show you guys the before and the after with those two things that I did. So we're brightening up some of the foreground elements and then darkening up some of the background. And you can see how before it's, it's a little bit flat and I know we made it flat, but now we're really focused on where we want it to be. So we started off with just this, just the background layer, which had our highlights too light, our shadows too dark. We even them out and then we kind of added that dodging and burning here at the very end, which really helped to bring everything out. So let's just show you guys the before and after. I'm going to group all those. There's the before. It does look like it's dodge and burn, but the areas that are too light are too light and the areas that are darker too dark. And there's our after. So we have something that looks a bit more refined and we still have that dodging and burning in the image. So I hope that got, that helps you guys because any image you guys do, if you have an area that's a little bit too light or a little bit too dark, you can use these exact same principles to kind of like bring those back to the midpoints and then work from there. And you're going to have the most control over your image. That way you can get the best results out of it. So awesome tutorial. I hope this helped out a lot guys. And uh, we're going to get into our contest every Monday. We have a contest and I'm drawing it out of this Canon lens hood right now. We're going to see what our topic is. And then you guys, submit your images in a comment below for a chance to win a Flurn Pro and to have your images edited on Flurn, just like this one. So let's see what we got here. All right, this is show motion or action. This is gonna be awesome. So the best ways you guys can show motion or action in your photo is with a little bit of motion blur. Now I know a lot of purists are like, oh, motion blur is the worst thing ever, but it's not. If you want motion blur in your image, it can really help to show that something is moving. So motion blur can be really, really useful. Um, in fact, if you guys saw some of the outtakes I showed with the mermaid shoot that we did last week, some of those shots, I wanted to shoot it like a 20th of a second because I wanted that motion blur in there because it really added to the dynamic uh, like sense of the image. So. What you guys should do, show motion and action. People can be doing something crazy in the image, but uh, motion blur is a great way to do that. Uh, using like lights to sh like light streaks and things like that are a good way to do it. Many good ways to do it. And I can't wait to see your entries. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn and good luck on this contest. I can't wait to edit your image and I can't wait to give you free stuff because I can't win it. So might as well have someone win it. <laughs> see you guys later. Bye everyone. I wish I could win Flurn Pros. They look really cool. I bet the guy who makes them is also really cool. <laughs> no, he's not. He talks to himself a lot. <laughs>